What up, what up, everybody? So, today I figured I would do this a technical analysis video on the NASDAQ. We're going to be looking at a more macro time frame. We're going to be looking at uh, RSI levels going all the way back to 1973. Um, some of my videos recently have been getting a little bit more views than they normally do. So, if you guys are watching this or you get any type of entertainment or knowledge from it, um, please leave a like and just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll keep pumping these videos out and uh, doing the best I can to get you guys... Uh, information a few times a week so this is data this is uh the chart going back all the way to 1973 um what i did was since we came down to 27 right here on the weekly rsi this last week um i wanted to make a video and just look at every single time if we just bought when the rsi came from an overbought area and it came right down to 27 oversold and what happens if we would have bought right when it hit the 27 area so um I charted this out. So we'll go ahead and look at it. Going all the way back to 1974, I believe, is the first time this happened. Yes, it was. So RSI came down to 27 for the first time. What happens when we would bought at the 27 area on the RSI? Boom, it hit there. Um, you still had another 31% downside potential if you just would have bought the first time it hit 27. And that lasted for about another half year. So then again, um, it happened... Over here, we had the RSI come from an overbought area, and the first time it hit 27 in the oversold, what would have happened? Um, you still would have had another 9% downside risk. So not that big, not as much as the 31, just 9%. Then another time here came from an area of oversold. First time it came down to the 27, what would have happened? You still would have had... 11% downside risk, but that was only another few weeks. Okay, 11% downside, that's not that bad. And that was in 1987. Here's 1990. Uh, would have had another few months of downside uh, pressure. Only 11%, though. So, not bad. It was near the bottom every time, a couple times here when it hit this uh, 27. And then, this is the, the big one. We all know it. The dot-com bubble. Um, if you would have bought the first time, it came from the oversold down to that 27 oh i marked this wrong Ooh, i can fix that 27 that's 27.1 we're not counting it there it is 25 all right so that's 35 percent downside risk here we go again 2008 uh, 34% downside over the course of the next few months. And then here's uh, the COVID crash. You would have had, it was like the next week. It was 3% downside. And here we are this last week. Um, we're hitting 27. So um, usually it's around 10 to 30% other than the dot .com, uh, which is 35. But look, at, this is why I find interesting as well is that these ones are close together here. These are within two years. This one was within three years. Um, last time that happened, we had a huge 1,400% run-up in the NASDAQ. Um, all these other ones have big gaps. This is like a, this is an eight-year gap. This uh, 1974 to, sorry, I need to pay the money to get rid of these ads. 1981 is so another seven years, another big gap. So... If it's similar to this one, we're going to have a nice, nice little run here over the coming, uh, coming five, six, seven years. But time will tell. Um, I don't think that we're going to see a big dot com 34, 35 percent drawdown from here. Still, um, I think we're nearing the end of it. I think we're going to have another five, maybe 10 percent at most. Um, we've just been hammered on the volume and the downside pressure the last few weeks. Time will tell, though. I like the risk reward at these levels on the NASDAQ. I think uh, growth and innovation stocks are getting destroyed and there's good value out there on a price to sales basis if you can find the right companies. All right. If you guys like the video, leave a like. I'll talk to you later. Peace.